Hey, welcome back. We're going to talk about the three main ways to cut metal. We're going to start with the bench shear, which is a perfect choice if you're making straight cuts on a metal that are wider than, say, your pink, the width of your pinky. does not do a good job of taking slivers of metal off. It'll just fold your metal instead of cut it. The next way we'll talk about is a saw frame, and then we'll talk about die cuts. So back to the bench shear. Your bench shear has this plate right here where you're going to rest your metal on. It also has a guide that once your metal is slid underneath, you can hold your metal in place. The cutting blade rests all the way along here. So if you were to take a look at the white arrow right here, at the bottom of it, you're going to see a little red piece of paper. Where this black face meets this base is where it's going to cut. It's not a sharp blade. It's just where 290 degree pieces of steel plate meet and shear the metal off once it's lined up. And then in order to make that shear, you're going to be grabbing the top face or the top of this handle and pull that down to cut. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. This is meant for 18 gauge metal. Anything thinner, anything thicker, I'm going to ask that you use the saw frame or the die cut. The metal itself, you want the excess metal to be on the left side of that. So I would not want to slide it under like this because I can't really hold it in place or see what I'm doing. So I'm going to slide it like this and I'm going to slide it under until as I look down here, I am lining up the edge of my tracing paper. It's a really good way to figure out where you need to cut that. You're going to cut on the edge of that tracing paper. Once I have it lined up, I'm going to hold it in place. If you're interested in making a 90 degree cut, push it all the way up here or all the way down to this red line. So you hold it in place. Once that's gripped, then you're going to come in to the cutting blade right here. You guys are going to stand right in front to cut. So sorry for my left handers because you're going to need to use your right hand for this. You're going to come in and reach up to the top of the blade and you are going to pull it towards you. Some of you may need to use two hands to do that. The longer the cut, the more resistance you're going to meet. It's really important that when you pull this blade towards you that you push it to the left a little bit. If you pull that arm to the right, you're going to separate the cutting blades and you're just going to get your metal to bend. So I'm going to grab it at the top and I'm going to pull it towards me and then gently put this back up to the top and you'll end up with the, the piece left from your first cut. You'll end up with the piece left over. And in order to get that out, I'm going to just open up this right arm and pull that out because we need to make a second cut right here. I'm going to go ahead and cross cut it right here. Now my piece itself, my design is now on the left side because that's where most of the metal is. I'm going to slide it underneath here. I am lining up the edge of my tracing paper with that. Now if I had used a Sharpie marker to mark that line, then I'd line up my Sharpie marker with that. Really important if you're using a Sharpie marker to make sure you go from edge to edge on that. Once it's lined up, hold it in place. This is going to be a much easier cut because it's shorter. I pull down, gently bring that back up. This is extra that someone else can use for a piece. Open this up. Here's your piece of metal that you're going to pay for. Um, so you would move on to weighing it and let me know how much that is to get it in your credit or your debit account. And then you're ready to move on to um, sawing, which is the next way to cut metal we're going to talk about. So until then, bye-bye.